I mentioned in some of our previous lessons about how net present value is superior to the payback method when it comes to evaluating whether or not to accept a project. And people generally just use the payback rule because it's uh, for its simplicity and that it's easier to calculate than MPV. I just want to give you some of the intuition in this video why MPV is superior. So let's focus on a specific example here. So we've got a project that we're thinking about taking on and the cash flows for this project are going to be right here. These are these are the cash flows. So we're going to have an upfront investment. All right, so that's negative four hundred dollars upfront that we're spending on this project, and then that investment is going to yield cash flows of one hundred and fifty dollars annually for three years. And then beyond that, there's not going to be any more cash flows. So this is just a three-year project uh, that's going to going to yield these cash flows here and require this upfront investment of four hundred dollars. Now, if uh, and I, I need to share a couple other things. So before we go and, and calculate the payback method or the payback rule, we're going to need to know uh, the required number of years we need to have the investment recouped within. And we'll say that for our firm, it's three years. We decide that investments, we, we would like to have the money back within three years to, to be repaid. And then in terms of calculating the MPV, we're going to need to know the cost of capital. And we'll say that for our firm, for this project, it's 12%. So let's calculate the, the payback the payback method uh, first because that's simpler, right? So we're just going to go and take the investment of $400. So we're going to take, and I'll just I'll put over here payback so you know we're doing the, the payback method. So for payback, we're going to take $400 and we're just going to divide that. So that's our investment and now we're going to divide that by the annual increase in sales, right? And the inc increase in revenue, $150 a year. Divide that 400, so just take the investment divided by the increase in sales. And now we're going to say, okay, what is the, or I, sh I shouldn't say increase in sales, I should be more specific, increase in cash flow, right? So when we think about this $150, it's an extra $150 in cash flow every year. Uh, I don't want to confuse you. So when we take that $400 upfront investment of cash and divide it by the $150 increase in cash flow for the next three years, now we're going to see what the amount of time it's going to take to pay back this investment. And it's it's actually going to be 2.6 repeating. I'll just round it to 2.67. So what that means is that this is going to take 2.67 years to pay back this investment. This initial $400, we're going to pay that back uh, two thirds of the way through year two, right, right about right here, we're going to have that paid back. And if you think about it, it makes sense because if we summed up all the cash flows together, uh, the the positive cash flows for the the three periods, it comes out to four hundred and fifty dollars. And the initial investment is four hundred dollars, so we know that four fifty obviously is greater than four hundred. So we know we are going to recoup before year three here. And, and, and so we can see that it makes sense that right about here is when we've gotten our money back. So that's the payback method. Now let's go and let's calculate net present value. And I'll, I'll put that over here. Say so this is going to be our NPV calculations. And so for NPV, now we're taking into consideration the time value of money. And so for NPV, we're going to have negative 400 up front. And then we're going to have plus 150 over one plus our cost of capital, which is, so will be 1.12, plus 150 over 1.12 squared. And the reason being this is period two now, we're discounting back two periods. And now the third cash flow we've got we've to add in here. So 150, I'm running out of space, I apologize, is 1.12 to the third, right? So this is the cash flow from year one, this is cash flow from year two, and this is the cash flow from year three. We're discounting each of them back, and then we're going to add that negative upfront cash flow. So when we do this, uh, we're going to end up with a, an, an MPV of negative 39 point, well, I'll just round it here, we'll say negative 40. So this is going to be MPV, uh, I'll put a little arrow there, negative 40. Now, if we think about our, if we think about the payback rule, we say, okay, our firm, we said if we pay this back within three years, we should accept, right? So if I'm just going to put this over here in white so we 
So accept would be the decision for payback, right? Because this 2.67 years that we're gonna, the investment's gonna be paid back within is less than our uh, required return for our firm. We say if it pays back within three years, do it. Well, it pays back in 2.67, so payback rule says accept. However, the MPV, we know that if it's a negative MPV project, which we have here, negative 40, we should reject this project according to the MPV. Now, as I've mentioned to you before, if there's a difference between MPV and payback rule, you go with MPV. Now, why? Why does it make sense? Why do we have conflicting uh, recommendations here from MPV and payback? Well, the thing is that payback rule is not discounting these cash flows to the current period, right? It's not taking into consideration the time value of money. And if you, if you don't know what I mean by the phrase time value of money, I, I strongly suggest you go back and check out one of our other videos on time value of money. Basically, this $150 in, at the end of year three is not worth the same as $150 at the end of year one or, or so forth, right? A dollar three years from now, one dollar here is not worth the same as a dollar here because a dollar here could have been invested and so you could have so that's why we're discounting this back this dollar in year three we're discounting that 150 back to the present and the payback does not take into consideration of that it just says look let's just take the under the uh the, the undiscounted cash flows and just to see how quickly we get them back so uh, another kind of thing and this this one is an illustrator here but let's just say that we had so now let's say that the project went an actual additional, let's say five years, or excuse me, an additional two years. Let's say the project went five years in total. And let's say now that we had cash flows of 150 in year four and 150 in year five. Now I'm not gonna go through all the calculations, but now we would actually have an MPV. Here, let me just get a little space. If we went, if it went five years, now we would have an MPV would be positive and it'd be 141. Now what if, and I'm just gonna, I'm changing around a few things here, so if you get a little confused, just rewind. So now we've added a couple years and I just wanna show you how things change. So if we add a, a cash flow of 450 in year four, cash flow of 150 at year five, and not changing like the cost of capital or anything, we're gonna have an MPV that's positive and would say accept. However, let's say that we also changed one other thing where we said that the payback, the, the required payback for the firm, let's say instead of three years, let's say that it was two years. Now let's compare that scenario. Now we've got, the, the only thing we changed were the payback, uh, the required amount of years to, to pay back the investment, and we've changed, we've extended the cash flows a little bit. And the reason I did that is I wanna show you something. So now with this, this set of cash flows here, the payback method would actually say that you should reject this project. And why? Because we're still paying back the investment within 2.67 years. Now, you might say, hey, that's weird. Why is this, why is this still 2.67? We've actually added some cash flows here. Well, here's the thing. Payback method, the payback rule, does not account for any cash flows beyond this period here, right? All it looks at is how long does it take for us to get these cash flows back? These cash flows could go into infinity, and the payback rule is not going to concern itself with that. It just says, at what point do we break even? What point do we get the cash flow back? And if you so, if you say, well, look, we need it within two years. Well, actually, oh, well, we're not going to get it back for 2.67 years. I guess we should reject the project. Well, if you've got these cash flows extending out and out and into the future, you might be giving up a project that has a lot of cash flow that's happening later in the project. Now, MPV is superior because MPV is actually factoring that in. It's saying, okay, we'll account for these additional cash flows. We'll discount them to the present value. And in that case, it would actually have this positive MPV. And so it, 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 you could just as easily, just by changing a few of the parameters here and adding some additional cash flows, see that now in this case, MPV is again superior because MPV is taking into consideration cash flows beyond the period when the, the, the investment has been paid back. And so now you might say, well, hey, you just kind of changed the date here with the payback period is, you know, you just kind of arbitrarily changed it. Well, that's another disadvantage 
the payback rule to begin with is that this this whole idea of oh it has to be paid back within two years or has to be paid back within four years or five that's just arbitrary who decides that why is it that amount of time the mpv when we think about mpv all we're looking at mpv is we're saying look let's take a look at the cash flows let's take a look at the cost of capital and now we're going to net all this out and we're going to see what is the wealth added to the firm and if a project is adding wealth to the firm all else equal then you want to be doing that project and payback is inferior to mpv it may be easier to calculate but it's inferior for all these reasons right it's not considering the time value of money it's not looking at cash flows uh, beyond that, the point where you've actually just repaid and recouped your initial costs and it's just relying on just this arbitrary figure of how long it is that someone decided the investment should repay themselves